Welcome to the Podness with Face, Pat, and Tiz. Anybody want to speak on that? I'm gonna be honest with y'all. Man. I can go on everything y'all put on this docket. I can go on. I I am about fed up with. Uh, let me be. Let me be clear. 2024. You got a 40 year old kid. I didn't give a fuck when I was 39. I really do not give a fuck at 40. Uh, I, I, I I I I'm done with being nice and being uh political. I don't have a PC bone in my body. I, I'm sick of the bullshit, and I'm gonna call it all out. I, you may go. I Diddy. like music. I like music. I like I like Biggie when he first came out. I like Hypnotize. Um, let's see, with some of the bad boy artists, G. Dev had that one song. Loon. I never really got into him uh mace got a new podcast with cam which is hilarious i never like diddy <laughs> you, you, take that, take that. <laughs> i know that we take all can tell that we can all can tell now everything every, uh, every last one of his catchphrases has to have a pause behind it every last one of them can't stop won't stop nigga you need to stop Take that. Take, you took too much. <laughs> Bad boy. You you need to be a good man. <laughs> going down here fast. What are you doing? Yeah, yeah. You nasty, man. You nasty as hell. Mr. Nasty, man. And I just want, and I just want, oh, man. Man, when that Epstein list come out, if it ever officially drops, I heard it did come out, but I haven't seen the actual list yet. I just have a feeling he's going to be there. It's a lot of people. Every week is a new nigga. Yep. Jesus. What I would say, all I'm going to say about this whole subject, I'm going to leave it at this and I'm going to let y'all go. I said it last part. These niggas nasty. Mm-hmm. All these celebrity niggas nasty and they be doing weird shit with each other. And, and I'm not saying the Illuminati is a thing because I don't believe in that, but I do believe I that believe. these niggas are compromised and they will do some nasty nigga shit. I believe, I believe they became famous so they be, can do these nasty things. That's the whole purpose of becoming it famous. It gotta be in you before it's on you. Like it's the whole freaking purpose. Why why like so you can be rich if you if you a billionaire somebody said this the other day if you a billionaire you can do whatever you want and then tell them what i forgot what i was i was on going through the cat williams stuff and somebody had brought this up i I forgot who it is if i go through and i find it i would definitely break it out i apologize but they said if you a billionaire you can go you can be jeff bezos and you can go into space and then I'll tell you about it later, because we 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 as the government might need you, you know, to like do that right quick to see how you fuck it up, and then we can go from there. Or you know, you got a lot of money. Money is money makes the world go round, dog. Like you you can do these things or whatever, or whatever. Yes, I I primarily think that most people have good intentions (laughs) i i i i think go let me let me god bless your heart i i i I, 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 i'm not no no i think i think people have good intentions but not what they might think is good it might not be good for you they say the the road to hell is the quickest road to hell is a person with good intentions or some shit like that or whatever. But I also feel like, I mean, you might get a normal person. They would say, what's the reason why you want to be rich? So I can help out my family, this, that, and the third, this, that, and the third. But 
majority of the people that has made billion dollars has broken a lot of rules. And if you get in, if you get away with one rule and you continuously get away with one, one rule, another and another and another, and you're making money and you're living and you're surviving, who can tell you shit? You might get a God complex out of that. The internet can these days. The only people can probably tell you that is the internet and somebody with more money. Somebody, some hey, these motherfuckers ain't paid their Illuminati bill. <laughs> and the motherfuckers and the motherfuckers that protected you before with their money are getting brought down. So you're next on the list. Harvey Weinstein got it. Hey, you know you did some dirt. You might want to spend some time cleaning that shit up. And then some dirt can't be cleaned. Man, when when it comes to that, I definitely understand. What I would say is this. Your past will always come to represent your present. Whatever you've done in the past, it will catch up to you. I found this out personally in the past year. Y'all know I was a heavy smoker. I had job issues because of I ain't smoked since October. Not a blunt, not a not a not a joint, not a roach, not a nothing. I have I have prevented myself from being around secondhand weed smoke. Guess what? That shit came back up in my system. It caused me an issue. What you do in the dark will come to the light at some point, whether you want it to or not, whether you believe in it or not, that's just the way of the world. Mm -hmm. If you fix what you're doing in the dark, you're going to be all right in the light. These niggas doing some nasty, freaky, disgusting shit in the dark, and I hope they all go to jail. They're bang. They live in the dark. Face. (laughs) Nasty ass niggas. They nasty, man. We, like, we can put all of the biblical and philosophical stuff on. These niggas are disgusting. They like wearing dresses. They like the white Howard. They they into doing weird, freaky shit where people pop them out of closets. They weird, they, they into doing all this shit. Billy Sorrell's like, this shit ain't new. It's a heavy homosexual community in Hollywood and, and the entertainment industry. You see it all and throughout what's everything. Would what's, what's that other nigga? What's, what's, what's that other like, I want to be clear. Uh, Color Purple. Color Purple, who was written by a black woman that was married to a white man, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong. But uh, this was written with a heavy LGBTQ agenda in the in the in the first movie like all of this shit is tainted with that so the they they like this shit they want to be disgusting they like to be what they are god bless them my thing is if you're gonna be that be that 10 toes down because I respect a, a gay person, a lesbian person, trans person, whatever, that just stand on it like, this who I am. I'm going to be this tomorrow. Then with the, with the, with the uh, comedian named Flame Moreau, I ain't uh, got no problem with Flame. Flame oh, yeah, stand talk- on that shit 10 toes down. That's what, I don't know what her preferred pronoun is, so I'm going to leave it alone. Yeah, but that I said person she, but stands on it 10 toes down, and I respect <laughs> that. My problem is all these motherfuckers that keep influencing our kids, acting like they straight, but they really pushing this other shit that they own. Be on that if that's what you own. I respect Sexy Red more than I respect half of the niggas that's in this industry, whether it be music or acting. Because at least she stand on the fact that she STD ridden, she is, she she into fucking a lot of people, she want to be a ratchet, that's what she is. She's completely confirmed on that. She stands on that. I ain't heard an interview yet from her where she says something different. That's oh, what man. she is. Her art reflects her, her lifestyle. She's said that that's what she is. Cool. But what you not about to give me these niggas that be like, I like women. I like women. But hey, I'm going to take it in the ass. No, nigga. Take that, take that, take that. My No, nigga. No. No, nigga. 
No. No. Stop it. Go to jail. You are Kelly and the rest of your crew go hang out together. But don't be out here on these streets influencing my baby. No, sir, read Bobby. Mm -hmm. I seen a disgusting video the other day. These babies oh, was on there. Man. It's it's like a whole room full of children. They can know they can be no more than five years old, six years old. And they're talking about hands on your knees. Hands on your knees. No, it will not be no hands on knees in this place. I will spank you and your parents. Have you lost your fucking mind? I done kicked every one of them over. Y'all need all y'all ass whooped. What the fuck are we teaching? Like, that's who's... This is why I'm so passionate about it. I'm a dad. I've worked my ass off to keep my son separated to the point where he knows curse words exist. He knows what they are and has yet to hear his mother or his father curse in front of him. He knows what TikTok, Instagram, and all these other platforms are and has yet to actually watch videos on these platforms. I'm that meticulous about the raising of my child. What you will not do is influence my child on some bullshit while you mask it as you being something else. Be what you are so I can, as a parent, choose what I choose to let my child see. But don't give me no bullshit and act like you one way so I let my child listen to this shit and then all of a sudden you come with some weird... No, nigga. What we do has an impact on the world around us. That's period. What I do as a man will have an impact on the women around me, the friends around me, my child, any other children that come around me, the 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 person at the store that interacts with me every day. All of that is going to get impacted in some way or form or fashion by my action. I got to be responsible for that. These motherfuckers are irresponsible and nasty. They nasty, nigga. They just don't care. That's the thing. The thing they like to do is disgusting anyway most or whatever and i don't i'm not i'm not man i, I don't I ain't gonna even know call it what they do and i don't want to know what they do i don't call so, it disgusting if you tell me you're a power bottom and that's what you live like that's what you told me what i have the option on a non-option to <laughs> listen to or not listen to you the problem is when you tell me you one thing and you act like a different way what so the me, fuck are you doing, bro? Let me separate this. The LGBTQ community that I see that are respectful and they're just people that just want to live their life. I am not talking about you. Not at talking, all. I am talking about people that do. They things. don't like these nasty niggas. Yeah, exactly. Because you're making that community look bad. Like, what Bad. the fuck? Dude? And I, I am being that I'm a person of the black community, and I know what media I took studied media at ODU, and they said ten percent of of media is mostly watched by black folks. Like majority of media is watched by that, and this is before the internet <laughs> and, and and things like that. And I've seen that media has a long record history of making us look ridiculous or whatever at the same time at the same time maybe that community may uh, from what i understand has had a hold on hollywood for a long time or, or whatever but it's also people within that and within hollywood that's also abusing and their power to do something against somebody else's will yeah that is the freaking problem yeah and they're trying and they're trying to use their power and their influence to convince this person that didn't Hell, want KJ to do that kj relax <laughs> but i hear you back there my boy chill out I, you don't like this shit either. He don't like it either. Look, look. Even the dog knows some bullshit. Mm. <laughs> but you, but you trying to convince people that probably wasn't even thinking like this anyway into a life 
that against against their will. You know what I'm saying? Like if you if you I don't even want to bring that because I don't want to compare that community with these people that are just doing whatever the fuck they want to do against other people's will because they it's feel the like they got Alan the Newman. money yep. Yep. and power to do these things. That's and then the and then and then Come and on, then they got the catchphrases or whatever this to try to excuse them for the bullshit that they've done or uh-huh. whatever. I can uh-huh. just repent and I'll be all right. No you won't have you ever been swallowed up? Pause. Take you that, ever been swallowed that. up? Pause. Nigga, what? Take that. Take that. Pause that too. Like, come this on. This nigga bro. leaned back on because Tyler That's Perry why. touched him and had a woman yell, Get the baby out. Push the baby out. Nigga, what baby? That's a grown ass man. What That's are we why. talking about? That's why I, when I see extra ass people or people would, they act like they have the all the charisma in the world and this, that, and the third. I look at them like scam artists. You, you selling Indeed, me a dream? Boy. Indeed, you, that's you, that's, that's the problem. And you're selling me, and you you trying to insult my intelligence, or insult my manhood, or insult my integrity. Or insult whatever you fucking can to get something out of me. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Get some kind yep. of control. And then be the same people that have to be the first one to judge somebody else. Indeed. Indeed. And, and I think uh, that might be why fucking Cat Williams be feeling the way he feels. <laughs> I don't know. Can't wait. Cat, cat, boy, 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 and boy. Man, Did that nigga expose some shit? Go ahead, First Face. Ball. I'm sorry for cutting your whistle. What you say? Said that nigga threw shots at almost everybody in the injury. Everybody. I will say this. Straight bullet. Direct shots, indirect shots, straight bullets all. How percentage of how much you believe? Um, I would go 70. That sounds about right. I would go 70. I don't believe he read 3,000 books a year as a three-year-old. The, 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 the best geniuses of our time haven't done that, so I, I'm not about to roll with you that you did that. Like That's just what I believe. I, I don't know. He could have. I'm not saying he did it. I'm just saying you asked me what I believe. I don't believe that. that that's the only thing. I, I don't whatever. believe I you were speaking. And three and four languages at eight and were guiding your parents all through the missionaries all throughout other countries. I don't believe that. I believe you might have known part of one other language and you might have helped out in that aspect, but I'm not about to go with that other that other part of it. I believe you were being hyperbolic. Mm-hmm. I'm not what I do believe, believe is 14, I do believe Cedric the Entertain I do believe <clears throat> Cedric the Entertainer stole your joke. That's because mm-hmm. me, and, me and Face used to watch Comic View religiously. That's not mm-hmm. an episode of Comic View that has come out that me and Face have not seen and probably been on the I phone remember. as it was aired live. I remember it. I, re- I know that joke that you're talking about, and I can say that it came out before the Kings of Comedy was ever a thing, because Kings of Comedy came out damn near when I was in college. I was in late high school college. That joke came out when we were in high school, still on the phone with girls talking about bullshit. So I know that joke. I I, I agree with you there. When it comes to the uh, Friday after the next thing, I believe you. Because Ice Cube came out and basically said the same shit you said. Mm -hmm. Now, I understand how from Ricky Smiley's perspective, things could have been different. I do get that. I'm not going to be naive and say I don't get that. You might have read for three or four roles in the script, but the nice. but the role nice. that they actually had you and that they wanted you to perform was the Santa Claus. I do believe that you wrote your own words for the the Money Mike character because Ice Cube said you did. If don't nobody else know the director of the movie, no. Mm-hmm. So I'm a roll with that. I do believe that Steve Harvey is a fraud. But I believe this before you said it. I just now corroborated because he did have a hairpiece. 
Mark the the hanging with Mr. Cooper is very very similar for some reason to the Steve Harvey show. Uh, it's literally the same premise if you if you replace basketball with music. It's the same damn premise with the yeah. same type of children on it. Uh -huh. Like all you have the airhead girl in Levita, you have the intelligent woman like the other lady that was on the show. Uh -huh. The only difference is you didn't adopt some kid that was living in the house with you, like Raven Simone, but that you know that's neither here nor there. The premise is the same. I do believe that Holly Robinson Pete. I do believe that all of these other dudes that seem to for some reason always have a problem with you and you have a problem with them all do have women that look similar because I've seen the picture. Uh -huh. It is a lot of light skin ethnically well, ambiguous okay. women that look like they could all be sisters. Uh -huh. Only one of them don't look the same and that's because she's light skin with lip fillers but the rest of them look like y'all could have been cousins. Y'all definitely of the same tribe. They got these the niggas do have a similar type exactly. for some reason. It's weird. Build a bear. Because in my crew, I got niggas that got dark brown skin, light brown skin, medium brown skin, all the way light skin, not even black. I got all of those different little things, and that's just in my little crew. So you ain't about to tell me that this whole crew of niggas that all do the same profession all got women that look very, very similar. And it's nothing behind that. Build a bear, bitch. Build a bitch. I'm a roll Build with that. I, I I think he said a lot of shit about the industry that was very true. There is this side and that side, and which side you gonna be on? It, it makes a difference. And I I thoroughly I believe that though before he said anything. So he already he just reinforced what I already believe. But again, these are all yeah, beliefs. I can go with the shit that has evidence. Facts. But when you got that many evidences to to back up the shit you saying, yeah. it it lends credence to the other shit you said. Like it may not be exactly like you said it, but it's close enough to the truth that I roll with you. I I'm gonna say Cat has been saying the same thing over and over again. At first, when I seen this, when I first said it a couple of years ago, I was like, all right, maybe he's just mad or something. I don't know what's going on with him. Because that's it's new to you. Yeah. But every yeah. time I see him, he's saying the same exact thing. It's Plus, people like, all right. But it's easy to keep thing, the truth straight. Yeah, like the, the only thing about that stuff about his past or whatever and um he wrote he read a whole i just look at you like all right you oh you exaggerating you know what i'm saying this it's hyperbolic i believe yeah. like you read maybe hundreds of books a year you might have yeah. even got up to a thousand my son has read a thousand books in a year so i'm not gonna say that's impossible three thousand books means you're reading 10 full books a day damn near mm -hmm. i've seen how any three-year-old reads and my, and again, I'm going with a son that has a uh, verified, been tested genius IQ. You ain't ingesting ten full books a day. Now, if they pamphlets or some shit like that, you might have, but eh, you might have been like at a thousand. But still, that's impressive. I'm not taking away from your intelligence. Mm -hmm. Like you probably were a very highly, yeah. high, highly intelligent child. That was much you more like to read. You gonna go at whatever you yeah. Read. Like I don't believe you knew three other languages, but I do believe you might have known another language. You might have been speaking Spanish at seven, eight years old, and been able to help your parents navigate through their time as missionaries in that country. I'm not gonna argue that. I'm just saying it. It won't what you said exactly, but it's close enough. Like I said, to the truth, where there's enough proof in there for me to roll with it. Mm -hmm. especially when the other things you said have been backed by verifiable facts. I've lived and, through some of this. And then it, then it's the matter of like, okay, when you say you came out the gate guns blazing, pretty much. You just came out the gate guns blazing. And I like what he did. He said when, when Shay was like, man, I don't know you need to drink. And he, and he ended up something like, I only had one less sip than you have or whatever. I was like, okay, this negates. It's a chess move. It's that, like that. That wasn't true. 
I'm yeah. a, I'm gonna I'm call full bullshit on that because Shay said that his whole staff can but, verify that that nigga was drinking before they started. It's the visual though. It's no, the, I understand. It's, he, it's yeah, the, the, the bottle is that's I empty. Mean, I get you. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And and, and then then I can tell that you know Shay, you big enough, you could probably drink a lot in general or whatever. This that third. Um, what? What I and I do like how he explained his formula of like how he rates how how much uh, laughs that a comedian gets and this that and the third. I can see as a person when you when you're passionate about a, doing a craft or whatever, you build your own formulas and stuff like that. You build the way that you do things, especially this that and the third uh, or whatever. I like. Um, but I could just tell when, it, plus it's just you verbatim has been saying the same things about these people that before. Part. And this is, is be- this is before I seen the video or, or whatever where I had those two jokes together. They'd be like, God damn, he, he is right. Because I did remember that joke. I watched Comic View uh, religiously. Steve you Harvey stole his gas station joke too. Comic, Comic View, I'm going to get on Steve Harvey in a second. I'm gonna get on him in a second. Comic Comic View, you wouldn't have a Kings of Comedy without Comic View. Unless it's just Bernie Mac. And unless it's just it's just Bernie Mac or whatever. May he rest in peace. Um, in general. I like I like what my brother told me, and this is what made me. Cat Williams rant like how Kanye wants to rant. Cause even 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 in moments, it seemed like it was a question that Shay had said and shannon i mean he said the same, same person and he's is it for a moment it just seemed like all right you not answering this question at all and then he eventually brought it back or whatever you know what i'm saying and that's why i'd be feeling like kanye is not good at bringing it back so we can understand why you even brought this up in the first fucking place or whatever one is ranting off truth and what they truly believe to be fact. Mm-hmm. One is ranting off of rhetoric they've heard and what they think people will move off of. Mm-hmm. It's the it's the it's the truth, passion. No motivation. When you got a motivation behind you trying to say some truth, there's an agenda there. Mm-hmm. I don't believe Cat Williams has an agenda because at the end of the day, he is correct. He has done nineteen a hundred city tours. This is this will, well at least this will be his nineteenth. He does sell out shows everywhere he goes, so he's not like and he's given money like other comics have come out and said how he's given them thousands and thousands of dollars just because they didn't have it. So like, there's no like, I need to do this. So that's why I'm saying this. It seems as if he genuinely just is like, nigga, y'all tripping. This ain't what happened. So, all right. On on a lot of his shit, the majority of his shit, I believe he was speaking. Steve Harvey is not funny. He's just, he's not. He's not. The first fucking um, stand up I seen, I think it was one man or some shit like that. He had the high top fade, nice suit and everything. He was talking about Willie. Willie getting fired at his job. That's what he was talking about. Lord, Lord, Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, I ain't gonna lie. That was funny to me. I it was certain parts order. of his stuff that was funny. <laughs> but for the for the hype that it was, I feel like the only reason why it's funny is because he had cuss words. And I didn't expect him to cuss that much. I expect you to cuss. I ain't expect you to cuss that much. You know what I'm saying? Like it's like like Dave Chappelle, right? He's going to cuss, but it's not. You not even going to notice it more than what he actually say. Pretty much, with Steve Harvey in his early comedic run, motherfucker, shit, mother, you know what I'm saying? This, that, and the third, you know, or whatever. And I didn't even know he was a comedian until I think after the show. I knew about DL Hughley, I knew about Sacred Entertainer, and Cat, or whatever, as stand up comedians. 
I know Steve as that nigga from that show. I don't even I don't know remember if it's just the Steve Harvey show or it was anything yeah. else. Yeah, but that's the uh, he had a um before the Steve Harvey show, he had a um uh, a sitcom with him and uh, his like his sons or some shit, supposed to be uh, like family type of shit. Nope, I don't yep. remember, I don't remember that. The only reason why I know about Steve Harvey show is Cedric the Entertainer was up there. And this is my thing about this is my theory about Cedric the Entertainer. I feel like when he was on Comic View or whatever, if he had those jokes that he had was his his first content or whatever, and then that I don't know that won't stolen because he could have been stealing shit back then. If you were stealing, you stealing now. You you had a habit of it before to get to a per- any point if you get what I mean or whatever. That's I just uh, seen a video that said he stole the bomb initial joke. Yeah, I saw that shit too. I think I sent that to you. I think I think I think I did or whatever from designing women from mm-hmm. designing women. So like. So like I feel like either the reason why you stealing jokes now is because the content, if you had the original content that you thought of on Comic View, you don't got no rights to it. You don't got no money off of it at all. You don't get nothing like that. You got a check for hosting that show, and that was it or whatever. So when you go out and you try to do those same jokes out there in the field or whatnot. You get hit with one of those cease and desist. Now you got to think of your whole shit all over again. And you are Cedric the Entertainer. That's my only theory about it. Because that's the only other thing I could think of right now. He could have been he could have been stealing. Because it's been it's records of it's known that comedians steal or Dave Chappelle had a story about somebody stealing his joke. Or whatever, and he could. And it was just a grown ass man, and he basically was like, and he was a kid at the time. So, like, yeah, I, I think, uh, that's that's my opinion. I feel like the things that he was actually passionate about that he just came out the gate with, or whatever, he was being truthful about all that other stuff, or whatever. I just feel like that's just some old man talking. Like, back in my day, we had to run 20 miles to get to. To the mailbox. That's how I treat it. Like, but uh, I would say, like I said, seventy percent of it I feel like was hyperbolic. I mean, thirty percent of it I feel like was just hyperbolic, mm-hmm. and then the other seventy was just I feel like he was speaking real facts from his perspective. Like, I do feel like you know sometimes facts, especially when you talk about history or something. It can be based on perception. So, like, me and you might have lived through the very same thing. We both be telling exactly what we saw, but we just had a different angle on what we saw, so it's going to sound a little different. But when the basic facts of the situation line up, we both telling the truth. Mm -hmm. Nothing that I've heard him say doesn't line up with what I know to be truth based on the timeline or based on other people corroborating his story. Ice Cube corroborated the story about Friday after next with Ricky Smiley. My own visual evidence and the video evidence corroborates the story about Cedric the Entertainer. Mm-hmm. Steve Harvey did have a toupee, and his show does very much mimic Mark Curry's show. And he's not funny. He does look like Mr. Potato Head. Now, funny, I can't judge because funny is subjective. What I think is hilarious may not be what you think is hilarious based off our type of humor, what we find funny, etc. But what I will say is when you had the championship of comedy, I'm in tuned enough to remember that. And I remember when the video came out of both of them doing their sets. Cat Williams was crushing that nigga. And I do remember that after that, Steve Harvey went on a hiatus from stand-up. And he's been doing his shows ever since. Like, I'm in tune enough to know that that lines up timeline-wise. Oh, that makes sense to me. So when this much stuff that you're saying, again, lines up, I can't argue with you. When you say Martin went on a hiatus right before Big Mama House 2, I remember that. Because he had just got Mm -hmm. out of all those scandals. He had just, when he came back, he did his special. Then he did Big Mama House too. 
in between that was when he was like out there passing out because he had on a skull cap and a sweatpants and all that was running yeah, in the traffic. He had all that weird shit that was going on with him, and he was like kind of in the news for negative things. So I remember that. I do remember that Brandon T. Jackson was the person that replaced that that came in as the buddy in my, Big Mama House too. And Brandon T. Jackson went on record saying that he regretted ever doing that role because of the dress. Uh, like I'm in tune enough to like kind of fact check these things as he said it is like all right I, I can't argue with you everybody's love character only had maybe a good 10 lines in the entire movie of friday one and he was not brought back for friday two you're not gonna tell me a character that was important enough to bring back for friday two they wanted to bring back Smokey. they wanted to bring back some other people they didn't bring back some of these other people because their role wasn't important enough to the movie for them to do so. It lines up. I've not heard, I've not seen a phase on love comedy special or heard a phase on love stand up comedy joke that has resonated with people to the point where it's been repeated yet. I have never seen him do stand up. The only time I actually seen him was Friday, and the only time. I actually see him is when he's hating on somebody like Jay Z or somebody richer than him. Now let's go here. Let's go here. I'm gonna I'm put you up on more game. I follow Kevin Hart. Like y'all know, I watch stand up comedy like religious. Like when it's a new comedy coming out, I'm watching it. Especially back yeah. in the day when it wasn't in the internet, it was just kind of cable TV. I was stuck on Comedy Central when Dave Chappelle first comedy special came out. I was oh, the first yeah. nigga at school. Hey y'all, y'all hey, seen that nigga when he was talking about? Hey, John, baby. bring us some crack on them. I, I was right there. Like, I was all up into the shit. I remember Dave Chappelle's comedy special before that comedy special. Let's talk about it. The 30 minute one? Yes. He, he I, was back, and... I was back in the day when HBO had their 30 minute special. I was watching Richard Jenny and all them niggas. Like, I, I'm one of them dudes when it comes to comedy. So, you ain't about to, it's not too much. Especially in the nineties and early two thousands, that you gonna put past me that I missed. Kevin Hart, I remember his trajectory. It was based off of Philly. He said it was all based off of Philly in New York. He rolled with the nigga. Uh, I can't remember the comic's name, but he talked like this. Uh, he now, I think he has some type of disease or something that makes him talk even crazier. But he's funny as fuck. But that's the comic that he was up under and they were on the East Coast. And Kevin Hart, even in his book, talks about how he started all of his comedy was in New York. And he was at this table with Patrice O'Neill and this nigga and a couple of Bill Burr and a couple of other guys that were really prominent on the East Coast. And that's where he got his start. So when Cat Williams said, who else do we know? that claims to have been in the L.A. comedy scene at the same time, but they were supposedly in the East Coast comedy scene based off your book, based off your trajectory, based off the comedy specials you produce, based off of the, like, I'm talking about the comedy specials where it's like, it's not an actual comedy special. It's really just like live at Caroline's that come on mm -hmm. HBO and Cinemax late at night. Yeah. Or that come on Comedy Central late at night. That's not a comedy special, but they just showing shit from the comedy show. And that comedy club that you're performing in is on the East Coast. So I know that what you're saying when you say this nigga couldn't have possibly have come up on the West Coast. That's He did come to the West Coast with a deal for a TV show that featured, if I'm not mistaken, Faze on Love in the pilot. Oh, and the shit didn't get yeah. picked up. Yeah. He did That's have that at the same is. time, right around the time when he was about to start working on Soul Plane. He came to the L.A. with that. So when Kat says that, I'm not, I have nothing to negate there. You're right. When you talk about an African nigga that talks with a fake African accent, that is Michael Blackson. Michael Blackson does not actually speak the way that he speaks for his comedy specials and shit. He, he doesn't talk like that. He talks like a regular Philly nigga. But he knows that that's more funny for his comedy act. And I remember when he was wearing them dirty dashikis on stage because on Comic View, that's how he came. Mm -hmm. Then he switched up to the suit and, the, and, the, and the, 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 the gear. So, like, 
I can't negate what yeah, he did this like, recently. Yeah, like I, I can I can say that some things are hyperbolic, but I can't say that Cat is wrong about nothing he said in that damn interview. Which is why you keep getting so much verification, which is why Shannon was sitting there like, I can't sit there and argue with this man. I don't know the truth. But a whole lot of truth has come out in the past couple of days where people are verifying and going along with exactly what Cat said. Tiffany, he said Tiffany Haddish won't funny. Tiffany Haddish made a response to this nigga on Twitter that won't funny. What the fuck do you want? The nigga right. There's some fuck shit going on. Mm -hmm. But 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 this is the thing. When the popular opinion is cool, don't nobody want to hear the truth. They want to hear what's popular. They want to hear what's going to make them seem like they cool and with the it crowd. Let, let me. All right. So, all right. So, we're being truthful and shit. Hey, guys, not all the singers that you listen to write their music. Hey, hey, guys, not all the rappers you listen to write their own raps or live the shit that they talk about. Hey, guys, I love wrestling. I love it to death. If they get hurt, they get hurt. But the storylines, hey, the storylines. Power Rangers ain't real. Uh, Santa Claus uh, doesn't really exist. What else do you want? What else do you want, people? <laughs> if it if it don't quack like a duck, it might not be a duck. And I say all this to say, hey. If you got a, if you have a TV show and you got an opportunity to do this and you just know a couple of people that's down to do it and they don't got shit else to do they need a hustle <laughs> I just do whatever they like they might hey you know what I'm a comedian now I ain't never made a motherfucker laugh a day in my goddamn life but hey if you write the jokes I say them it, everything's fake, y'all. Everything's fucking fake. Every damn thing. Everything's fucking fake. What more can I tell you? I'm just the guy that like to read comic books. <laughs> I am. I am. But everything's fucking fake, man. Well, let's end that. <laughs> we talk about comic books. What y'all think about this Jonathan Major shit? And where uh, the MCU goes from here now that well, the well. band that was supposed to be planned for its next phase is no longer available. Um, Should they recast? Should they change the direction and go towards the uh, Doctor Doom or some other big man? W what are your thoughts on this? And the and the Jonathan Majors case in general. Um, I think that even video evidence to a certain extent can't help a black man in certain instances. Um, I feel that Marvel, as big as it is, can go in any direction, really, and make it make sense. It's all a matter of how much money they want to shell out and what direction they feel like going in and how much changing to their timeline they feel comfortable doing. Um, I would like to see, um, what, what, what's the nigga name? Would, would, uh, I, do it, is Galacticus or something like that, Pat? Galactus? The guy okay. that is planet. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I would like to see some shit like that. Um, I feel the best movies are their um, ensemble movies where everyone's in it. I, I really don't like the solo movies they, they've been doing recently. So I feel like them doing an ensemble movie with like a major villain from out of like they can tie in or just be a, a, a 
newfound major villain where they take the L in the first one, a major L and not like a close L like they had in the other the other um uh, one. It was what was it before? What was it? In game and what other one? It was uh it was uh, Infinity War. Infinity War and then in game. Okay, like they did in that one. They that should like do something like that too. with the Galactus. They they would have to with Galactus. Um, do you want to say something before I rant? Because you know how I feel. You, you know how I am about comics. I can go. Uh, so I got uh, all right. So first of all, with the Jonathan Majors um situation, I would say. First of all, don't ever tell a white woman to act like a black woman. Like that just pissed me off, and it, it kind of turned me against them in general. I'm gonna just say that there, and I'm gonna leave that there. That ain't got nothing to do with the rest of what I'm about to say, but I had to get that off my chest. What I will say is, uh, as far as the actual situation, I think that what he got convicted of is actually, I, I may be in the minority. It makes sense based off of the evidence presented because he didn't get convicted of like maliciously doing anything he got convicted of more of like shit that is basically if you look at the letter of the law it's basically saying that like he did some shit that caused harm not necessarily meaning he meant to cause harm uh -huh. you fucked up when you picked her ass up and put her in the car you should have just let her ass chase you down the street and act, look a goddamn fool but you picked her up and put her in the car, which caused her to hit her head and which caused her to be able to have a claim for whatever else was wrong with her. Do I think that you maliciously did it or that you were trying to abuse her? Hell no. Hell no. Which is why she took her white ass to the club that night, which is why she was still out there partying and shit like it won't nothing wrong until shit hit the fan. Then I believe she did what all white women would do if they're dealing with a black man and some shit go wrong, she's going to try to save faith. So she did that. That's what I truly believe. But you put yourself in that position. So you got to eat that. That like That's part of being a man. You put yourself in a weird position and whatever comes from it, you got to eat it. That's on you. What I will say is I would love to see them take uh, she would tell AJ4, I think that's his name, and make him king, the, the, the light-skinned nigga from Hotel Rwanda. Oh. If y'all know what I'm talking about, he's an African nigga. Uh, I don't, I think it's she would tell. She would tell Edgy a four. Is he on Four Brothers? Yes. He he is Victor Sweet. Yes. yes. That nigga. Put him right. as king. I feel like he looks similar enough where you can play it off he looks at least more similar than goddamn Don Cheadle and Terrence Howard did when you replaced uh, War Machine. So uh -huh. go ahead, do that. I say you continue the Kang saga, but don't make Kang the big bad still. I still say the big bad of this next thing needs to be Dr. Doom or Galactus. I would face on this one. Or if you're going to go completely off script, you can go to Mephisto. Just because you've set all of these things in motion already by different things you've done. If you go Mephisto, you can build off of the Wanda saga and kind of take it into that realm. If you go to the Doctor Doom, you can use the fact that you're bringing in the Fantastic Four and X-Men and all of them into your MCU, and you can make a real plot line that goes off the real Secret War comic and roll that way. If you go Galactus, you can go with the fact that, again, you're bringing in Fantastic Four, so they're going to have to have a big bad, and that big bad is big enough to actually bring the Fantastic Four, the X-Men, and the Avengers together to face it. You got a whole, you got a whole like, 10 to 12 movies you can make, and about 3 to 4 series you can make off of those, whichever direction you go off of them big bads. But I do think that he need to keep Kang, because you've built so much around him so far, his ending cannot be a file at the very ending of the Loki series. You put too much time and investment into him. Like, we not going to act like he didn't exist. And you giving us end credits. Like, I, I think it's time now for the Marvel to start building all these end credit scenes that we've seen and make them pay off. Otherwise, 
I'm not staying in the movies for an extra five minutes to see the shit. So I think there's a way where you can fulfill the people who've already been watching up until this point, bring in the new people that are only here to see these new comics that you're incorporating now that you have the rights to them, and still give us a big bad that is feasible while still maintaining the, the Kang storyline. You could take Kang right into Doctor Doom for Secret War. And then you could come back and turn that, flip off of that into the Mephisto or into the Galactus storyline and have no problem doing so if you do this right. But I think if you just completely just jump from one thing to another, you're going to keep lo what they're losing right now, which is causing them to have like financial ruin in these past few movies they put out, is they're alienating the core base that started going to see it when they first started building the MCU. There's a core fan base of just comic book people who have, even if you haven't read every comic and you're not like an aficionado, if you at least have enough comic knowledge to know these big storylines that they're following, you're going to see how they keep tying in. Iron Man was cool, but I'll be honest. I saw Iron Man after I saw Captain America. But it was because Captain America and Iron Man and the Incredible Hulk, which I had seen way before that I didn't even know was going to tie in, all kind of started making this collective chain. I was like, where are they going with this? And then when I saw in the end credits of Iron Man that they got Wakanda there, oh, shit, that's my nigga. I know Black Panther. I'm not as familiar with some of these other characters, but I know Black Panther. I know he, I know, I know him and Storm's little storyline and all that. So like I'm I'm excited to see how you tie in the X-Men to this. Cause now you can bring in the Black Panther and the fact that Storm was, you know, originally from that area. And and you can build off of these connections while still having these individual storylines. So that's what brought a lot of people into it that were comic book fans. And that's the main people that has gone to see it, no matter who the the hero is. That's why they were so successful. What's happened lately is they started to go away from that and they're trying to do too much that alienates that fan base, that core base of like, nigga, what you doing? I know this better than this. You did. You gave me this thing with the scrolls and that don't match up enough for me to like, what are y'all doing to my shit that I love? That's not right. Don't give me that little ass arm. <laughs> Like, and I know that's like a bad, but that's like represent representative of like the initial problem. Like y'all are giving us shit that don't match up. That little ass arm on that person's body don't match up to the character that's supposed to be portrayed by that arm. Give me the full arm. Take the time to take the time and investment. Stop putting out 30 shows and 30 movies a year and go back to the old formula. You might get one series, maybe two movies in the year. And that's all you get until next year, which gives you time to figure out how you want to make all this shit connect next year. But which gives us time to actually build up a fever base of like, we want it, we want it. You're oversaturating the market right now and it's causing y'all to make silly mistakes in storytelling. And if nothing else, comic books is based off of storytelling. If the story don't make sense, nobody cares about these flashy ass pictures which is why some comics go by the wayside and some comics stick. It's the storytelling in these things. Frank Miller's run as a Marvel artist comes from his art of storytelling. He makes you engaged in the actual story that's being told to where the characters can keep being interchanged and change out and people can die and, and all of this, but you stay stuck because the storyline got you hooked. Even the X-Men cartoon, it was so impactful on kids of our generation because the storyline from the start of we meeting these X-Men to the end of like we've gone through Mr. Sinister which takes us to Moreau Allen which takes us to Cable and his now we're in the future and the Sentinels taking over this all followed a plot that was like okay I get where we're going I want to see what happens next I don't care what happens next no more right now because you got so many of these loose ass plot lines that just kind of all over the place because you trying to throw everything at me that I don't care. So I personally I stopped that, watching when they came out with 
Cap the with the Captain Marvel and She Hawk and the little Avenger girl and that, yeah, that shit. The Hawkeye, yeah. all of that. Yep. Yep. It, it's yeah, too I, much yeah. without the proper taking time to do the storytelling. Now, what I will say is I like what they're about to do with Echo. Echo is taking the shit that we already seen on the Netflix series and kind of tying this together to a new story and it, it seems like they're about to do it right. But I think the problem with Marvel is they need to slow down, give us an overarching big bad while we clean up the big bad we already have. Clean up Kang, right? While leading to the real big bad, which is Galactus or Mephisto or Doctor Doom or whoever you have in mind to be the next big thing. But clean it up. That's what we used to do. We cleaned up Ultron while pushing forward toward Thanos. We knew Thanos was there, but we didn't get him until you had kind of picked apart these other little storylines that naturally led into the next one. Civil War led into Infinity War. You had, uh, what was the thing before that? Iron Man 3 kind of led into that. Uh, the Captain America before that led into that. Even the the the, the um, Agents of Shield show led into the scroll the the us now seeing uh, where the Hydra Ant has Man taken over, which leads us to the next thing. Yes, Ant Man, Ant Man uh, and the Wasp leads into Infinity War, which gives us like everything was le all the shows and all the movies were all going this way. What we have right now is this show kind of going this way. Well, what that what that what do Star Fox got to do with this? And what they gonna do about this big ass statue that's in the middle of the damn Indian Ocean? And what about all these millions of scrolls that you saying is on on Earth? Where they at? And what Namor doing now? Cause you didn't kill him, so he's still here. Like you got all these loose ass plot threads that are not naturally leading into the next thing, so you're not cleaning them up. So they need something. I think Kane can be the thing that like because he's dealing with time and multiverse. He can kind of clean that up before you introduce the next real big bad that takes us into the new Avengers and all of this other stuff. Pat, go ahead. I know this is your shit. I know this is your shit. So I know you got some theories. Marvel. Yeah. Pre-told what they it. had before. What they had before was the Russo brothers. They were organized in their situation. They know what it is. I've actually seen this same situation before in the comic book industry in the 90s when the X-Men boomed the comic book industry again and then they started making comic books of every fucking thing in the world. And they they fucking after a while. It used to be a time where you get a comic book. If it's the first edition, you know, you get a praise or whatever, it'd be worth something to you. But at a certain time or point, everybody was getting a fucking comic book in the world that they were trying to get the money off of comic books and the appeal that they, and popularity that they had that to the point that like none of that shit, if you collect them, they not going to be worth anything, period. Or whatever. They're doing this shit with the movies now. Oh. Or whatever. Because they tried to make too much. They just Disney, can you let Marvel be Marvel? Can you can you leave the agendas everywhere else and just let Marvel be Marvel? They have writers at Marvel that have done great job to the point that you actually notice that they have a product that you can make money off of. Well, so I just leave it at that. Well, so you said so you said D Disney should let Marvel writers in on the writing of these movies to help with the continuity and the and the cohesiveness of these storylines. Am I yes. understanding you correctly, or am I not? They, they yes, they should. They should. They already have set material that has been pro proven to work. You got certain stories that outshine the rest, even through that bullshit of that of that era or whatever, you got certain stories that are so popular that become canon that they are part of the timeline. That's 
That's it. I would I love to like see the house of L. I would love to see that too. Let me get into that first oh, in, in a minute. With Jonathan Majors. Man, you fucked up. <laughs> you really fucked up. And I'm, I'm, I, I liked you as Kang the Conqueror because Kang the Conqueror was not a character I gave a fuck about. I had no idea who he was, to be honest with you. Until but the movie. it proves no, I know who he was. And the, and the crazy thing about it, <laughs> spoiler alert, we don't know if Kang the Conqueror is the descendant of Reed Richards or Dr. Doom. His I thought name, he was a descendant of Reed Richards. I thought yeah, he was his like name is Nick Fanny, Fanny, but in the comic books, they re they open it just a little bit that you know, somewhere down the line, a Doom descendant and a Richards descendant might coerce. Oh, so that's but that's is Dr. Doom Reed Richards in the future or something that came back? No, Dr. Doom is Victor Von Doom, and do not insult okay. Dr. Doom like that because he will, he will, I, banish I'm just from asking because when you say that they bad. coerce, I'm thinking that like they may be the same person, but just not realize they're the same person, so they fight each no, other, the the but they also, a, um, I they are, are re, if Reed Richards is Batman. Dr. Doom is the Joker. No, I, right. better. But what if, if the Joker... Reed Richards is Superman, uh-huh. Dr. Doom is Lex Luthor. Dr. Doom is more Lex Luthor than Joker. That's okay. a better analogy. Because okay. Okay. he has diplomatic they ability. They don't have the same genetic. Gotcha. Yes, and okay. Victor Von Doom, he knows science and sorcery, and he's a and he's a diplomat, so he has diplomatic immunity. You can't just go into his country and say, hey, because you think he's a tyrant. You got to deal with political problems along with it, whatever. That's why I wish Chadwick, bless his soul, was still around because if Dr. Doom was around, we could have had Doom War between Black Panther and fucking Dr. Doom. I love that comic. Yes. Yes. It's, it, it was fucking awesome. We could have had an actual Namor versus Black Panther. That That's what I wanted to see. Yes, because they hate each other. Because I know Period. for a fact that they battle. I do know that. They, they yeah. hate each other. Yes. I'm pretty sure they, yeah, they hate each other. But um, they, the way they have gotten him in the movies, because Loki is the best show to me. Period. Absolutely. They did the group. They did, it's the best Absolutely. show to me. Period. If it wasn't for that show, if he didn't have the Loki show at all, god dang, we could have he could have just been a miscellaneous Ant Man character and that'd be just this, and all us nerds would have been like, we could have wrote that a lot better. Right. Pretty much. And it is Loki in a sense, makes it like you're he's integral because I feel like Loki is integral to the future of the MCU now that he's become the because of the story. popularity like, of the oh, no. story. Yeah, like I feel like because he's become the father of stories, you now have to do something with that. You can't just leave Loki there sitting at the at it. That is the one thing they got right. They are really right now that him being the god of stories is new. It's a new thing in the comic book. And that's a whole different Yeah, that's a that's another hour of me trying to explain that shit. Anyway, um what I really i like moon knight i like loki i like moon knight for the simple fact that i just i liked him as a character i I feel like it could have been betrayed better or whatever but i like the storyline of the character or whatever if i do feel like dr doom spoiler alert is the next big bad and kang the conqueror was going to build up to dr doom some type of way within their relationship with each other i feel like that time. that makes the most sense for the next big bad and, yeah, and we, being before and we being, get to the black some of this stuff there's three there's three secret wars there's the first one where Spider-Man had the in the 80s where Spider-Man had the black suit and it was the Beyonder and this, that, and the third. And the Beyonder wanted to figure out what the fuck is good and evil. And then we find out. Um and and uh yeah, the Beyonder, that's some that's some old other shit. All right. Then we got a second secret wars because they needed 
to make more money off of of, the, of a, just in general hey the first secret worlds was great let's get another secret wars and hey we might be able to sell some action figures and shit. then we have jonathan hickman secret wars that's a writer and that's a writer jonathan hickman is my favorite rap modern day comic book writer okay he, he he has basically shaped marvel currently now that i am very i'm like interested now i got i'm watching the videos all day of all these characters and this that and the third because it's just certain he can write characters he can make he can make up characters and write characters or whatever to the point that you might not even care about them before the first but the story's so good that afterwards you figure out oh shit, this regular motherfucker was this the whole time and it makes sense so i feel like they're going to follow his secret wars because he's good at making he's good at taking crazy aspects of marvel that just it just sounds weird as shit. just like just like james gunn took a freaking talking rocket of a talking raccoon and made him make sense and part of the Guardians of the Guardians of the Galaxy series is awesome, or whatever. Jonathan Hickman is great with that, pretty much. So I think if they stick with that storyline of what he they he wrote from two thousand, I'm I'm roughly putting it out there, but between two thousand and up to like two thousand fifteen, sometime around that period, he rewrote up Avengers and everything right when they were getting popular in the movie and it was probably the best great fucking writing about that story ever and whatnot. I say all that to say this oh with Galactus I want them to wait because the situation the way the way Marvel and the storylines with Marvel is like it's just like you said. You got all these loose ends you need to tie up, and, and, and you got to tie it up in a way that we're going to be interested. Because I didn't he go see be the, the Marvel. Movie. I've he seen every, in I've in seen every Marvel movie. movie and show up until this point, every single one. I so stopped. I can tell you, it it doesn't. It, it's it's yeah. My son, my have... son liked it because he liked superheroes, so he ain't care. Yeah. He was just happy to see some superhero shit going down. But like, mm-hmm. yeah, it's a lot thrown in there. That's like, all right, well, where does this go from here? What what's the? Mm-hmm. How did we get here? Why does this make sense? Mm-hmm. This doesn't make sense mm-hmm. with the last thing. Uh, uh, yeah. They need they need to get they need to get a writer team like they had before with the Russo brothers or whatever. They need to get with Jonathan Hickman so they can organize this right figure out this thing go ahead go ahead and and get somebody that you think is good enough to get Kang going along so we can get the doctor do you need to get all this shit right because all I or, or whatever because all I give a fuck right now about is these motherfuckers that's it I don't give a fuck about nobody else Harry up and get these Bruh, they about to break my boy Wolverine in that's all I care about <laughs> oh, oh, whatever. I'm waiting for you three. give me that's Wolverine you win but but you know what the X-Men is what what they're gonna do for Marvel is the same thing they did in the 90s. And when 90s came out, Marvel and not to this day, X-Men number one in 1990 is one of the most popular and highest paid comics of this date. That's what they're that's what they're that's as their well plan. it should be. That is their plan. They're going to use that example or, or whatever to push, to figure out a way to fit the X Men into the universe. And I really also, once again, think they need to follow Jonathan Hickman's example of his storyline of the X Men that just came out in 2019, The Powers of X, The House of X. Try to use that to fit them in because the way he writes shit in there, it could perfectly fit into the Marvel Universe. If done right, yeah, I've seen a lot of these motherfuckers online do a, do theories where it would just it would fit perfectly. It would make a lot of sense if they do it that way, or or whatever. And 
where in, in general but really that's really that that's it i'm i'm disappointed i'm disappointed but i i figured that this was going to happen because how do you top in game how ain't that one movie i know how a- by doing what you said if you had to start it from the beginning if you had it from the beginning from in game started building towards a Dr. Doom, right? But you use these proliferate characters as the big bands until then. The same way you did with Ultron and uh, Whiplash and uh, Winter Soldier and all of these other guys until you get a Red Skull. Like, I'll tell you get to that. You give us these solo stories that introduce Captain Marvel. So you give us a supreme intelligence and all of that. Cool. That's great. But not leave it so open-ended. Even with the Eternals, say you give us the fact that we have these things out there, right? We can then get to that at some point, but if when you leave a big-ass statue in the middle of the Indian Ocean and the Eternals are still around, but then you throw in Star Fox at the end of it, now we're confused because we like, all right, so you're bringing in a, a person from this continuity, from this thing. How do these connect? And for the person that's a casual viewer that's only followed the MCU, they don't know the comics by heart. You've now left us with a lot, like, comic book people going to know the characters because they know the characters. Cool. But the rest of us are like, well, how does this make sense with this? Like, I don't get the tie in. This has nothing to do with this. And it used to be the the end credit scenes was kind of like the thing that showed you what the next movie was going to be. You saw the hammer landing in Nevada, so you knew that Thor and Black Panther were coming in the next few movies. Which made you understand when you saw those movies pop up. Oh, I get it. That's what they was teasing there. Cool. You giving us teases now that don't have nothing to do with nothing. And you're giving us big bads that don't connect with the rest of the story outside of the movies that they're actually in. Like, King the Conqueror ties into nothing that Wanda did, ties into nothing that Moonlight did, ties into nothing that the end of Eternals did, ties into nothing at the end of Shang-Chi. It only ties into Loki and Ant-Man. So for the rest of us, that are not as in tune with the comics, what are you talking about? Why does this, why is this important to me going forward? What are you leading toward? Like back in the day, it was like you showed Thanos at the end of a movie, so you knew he was coming and you saw how he tied into the movie you just watched, but you also saw there was some other shit coming. So now we waiting on them. And you ended the rest of your movies with something about him, but it wasn't quite all the way, oh, he's still coming. So he connected to this too. Oh, shit. So now we know it's Infinity Stones. Okay, so cool. So now the comic book guy can know, oh, they're going to the Infinity Saga. But the layman can also know, okay, I've seen this same type of end credit for the past three movies. I know we going somewhere with this guy and he's tied to all these niggas and he's been controlling this shit so that's why when, when we do see the team up, it's not like, oh, wow, that's a surprise. It's like, oh, that made sense. I get that. But now you tying the bangle to the 10 rings to the to the light. But the, 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 the last mo- the last show we watched that had somebody with light powers, she not in this. So why do I care about this? And then it's like, what are y'all talking about? They're selling and you to throw you to throw venom in there at the end of the movie, but I don't really get where he's coming in at yet. I, like what? What? This they're selling. It's too movies. many. It's too many. That part. It's too much merchandising, and like we're just capitalizing as opposed to and like at I the beginning get, of the I MCU. It was a storyline. Iron Man lined up with Thor, which hold on. Incredible Hulk lined up with Iron Man, which lined up with Thor which lined up with Captain America, which then led us to, okay, we now know it's a Tesseract, 
So the Tesseract, when you now introduce it as an Infinity Stone, and now you give me the next door, okay, I get that now. So now it's two. Infi okay, so now when you give me Guardians of the Galaxy, that's another Infinity Stone. Okay, I get it now. I see where y'all going, and it's all tied together, and you're giving me end credits that also make the movies, like, cohesive. They stopped that. They've just given us a bunch of movies that are and shows that are standalone, okay, but you're building a universe so they don't connect. Mm -hmm. if they do echo wrong I'm going to be like done with it like don't give me the MCU then just give me the standalone movies and say that it's not an MCU it's not the MCU this is just Marvel movies then I can take Deadpool by itself and this by itself and this by itself and I'm this by Deadpool itself by and itself, just looking anyway. at that but at this point, you've given me the idea that all of your movies and shows are connected. So when they don't connect, you lose the layman. The, the comic book people are going to keep fucking with it because they understand the overarching things that connect all these characters. But the layman does, has no idea how any of these characters even come together. Like, if you don't know shit about Moon Knight and you just watch the Moon Knight show, you have no idea how this connects to the larger MCU. Now, if you know that he he's also been a uh uh what what was what you call them the midnight sons or the midnight riders mm -hmm. or the, you if you if you know that he connects to them or if you know that he's connected to the Avengers in some way, cool, you got it. But if you just watch Moon Knight because you were just interested in Moon Knight, you have no idea why why this is important to anything else you've watched in Marvel. Mm. Here's no, the problem. I, I, I'll, I'll say this and then be, I'll be done with it or whatever. But they're going to lose the comic book, um, the original comic book uh, audience that they have anyway, too, because we're going to look at this shit like, what the fuck y'all are doing? We can write better shit. Mm -hmm. And, and, we, and the numbers are showing yep. And the numbers yep. are showing yep. yep. because yep. now, now the lamest, lamest um, everyday watcher, viewer is going to be going to the one comic book friend that they know that know the stuff i'm gonna be like is this worth watching and like i'm gonna watch it just to see how they do it's, that's it's, not a good enough selling point no it's not now if i come in to you like oh my god oh my fucking i'm just saying random shit like infinity stones black panther you know i'm just saying shit excited or whatever like, I just Bruh, I watched Thor Love and Thunder just because you told me a story of Gore the God Butcher. So I was literally invested in like, well, how is this about to tie in? Because this nigga sounds epic. And then they made this nigga a bitch. Mm -hmm. I, was very I remember when you had that conversation on this very podcast about him and I was like, oh, this nigga's okay. about to be legendary. Oh, yeah. shit. And the necros. Oh, my God. What are we about to see? And how are they going to tie in Spider-Man to this? And, oh, you said Spider-Man is important? So that means that the next Spider-Man movie goes... And you gave me a bitch in a movie with some yelling goats. And the yelling goats, to this day, the main thing I remember about that movie. I couldn't tell you a lot about the plot of that movie, but I do know that they had some goats that were yelling because they were funny. Yeah, one part of that movie that came from the comic book. And that was just the the dead the dead god guy that was a mountain, and that was about it. I'm that still trying it. to figure out how they about to inc incorporate Hercules, because did he get teased at the end of a movie? Selling action figures. That's the. I'm point. gonna you if we want we gonna like put it and what I mean by selling action figures or whatever is just like I said they did a second secret war so they could push action figures or whatever you know what I'm saying Hasbro made G.I. Joe so they could push action figures and shit like that whatever this is different this is a pandering type yeah that Disney is probably pushing so they that's because that was Disney model or whatever there is characters in Marvel for everybody but if the character itself is not popular or as popular as Spider-Man. Or you cannot turn him into Spider-Man or Wolverine. 
it don't matter it don't matter what freaking group he's he or she from if black panther would just turn out to be a black batman or whatever you wouldn't have the the outcome that came from black panther yeah you know what i'm saying like you can't you you can't just make up a character and then say they're from this community so that community can come Oh, right, and, right, and, right, right, and right, then, right. And then you're going to get the same, you're going to get your loyal, your baseline, <laughs> and in the community. And this, that, right. third. That's Absolutely correct. Thing. Or whatever. Like, you can't do that. And don't think I'm just talking about one community. No, I think what you're saying is that the I'm MCU about, started. Oh, go ahead. They, they, they are using demographics. And they saying we need to get this demographic, this demographic. What what color Power Ranger can we put here from Marvel that we can push out? Absolutely, you can't, you can't do it like that. You you need to have that. Look at that formula before. Build you a writer team. Have that writer team do the research and go from there. But Kevin you, Feige, you, go back to what you did with Incredible Hawk and Iron Man. You took the popular story. character. That action figure led him into a, po- a character that really isn't one of the more popular characters from Marvel. Like Iron Man wasn't like this big deal to a lot of people before Another the man. movies, but because you invested in us in this story, it was the story of how we got to end game that led that made us invested. We started to care about characters that we didn't really know, but because you introduced them in a way that was so intriguing. We became invested. I didn't know who the Guardians of the Galaxy were before the Guardians of the Galaxy movie, but because you found a way to tie them into these other characters that you've already got me invested in, I now care. Now you're introducing me to characters that I don't know why I'm supposed to care because the story that they're in isn't that great. And it doesn't really connect to the other stories that I've already become invested in. Which makes me be like, well, which movie is really important? It used to be every movie was important because it was leading you to the next thing. So if you didn't see this movie, there would be stuff in the next movie you would be lost on. Now I feel like I can watch each movie independently, each show independently, and not have any loss or gain. It's just kind of like, well, if I care about this character, I can watch it. If I miss it, I'm not really missing a lot. Exactly. And I think that's the problem. Kevin Feige, go back to what you did, like recreate the Infinity Saga over and over again. Whatever your ending, like figure out your ending. Now that you know you have an MCU, it was kind of like when you made Iron Man, you realized, oh, these people are seeing these things as connected. Where are we going? Once you know where you're going, you can plan everything else toward that. But if you're just planning as you go and figuring out where you're going after each movie, you're going to have a bunch of problems. Uh, I need an end goal in mind already so that as you're building these plots for these other things, they all are tying in and leading toward that culminating thing that makes me like, damn, Iron Man died. Captain America finally got down, picked up, the, picked up Mjolnir. Like, it's all these threads that we saw coming that finally connect because we've all had them connected in our minds before that point. Before Endgame, everything was already connected for us. So everything we saw was just like a payoff to this building up. Right now, I feel like you keep building us up in the movie and then you let us down at the end because I don't know where we're going. That I don't get where, how this was connected to the last thing. I don't really know how this connected to the next thing. It's just a thing. And I don't care about just random stuff. I don't. The superhero industry went like X Men did that, where it was like, I, "Where are y'all going? You got you gave me this origins movie with Wolverine, but that ain't really connected to the bigger X Men story that they telling right now." And then this thing you went back, but that don't really connect to the thing. Like, what are y'all doing? 
give us the give us the comic books and movie form, and we'll be happy. Mm-hmm. Just Still follow that. Story. It Still it worked. Stories. The X Men the X Men cartoon bad. was the best example of it to me. Like everything I remember yeah, from right. the X Men comic books. It wasn't exactly the same, but it was a similar chronology to where when you left this story in one episode, I kind of knew where you were going here. When you introduced Omega Red, I kind of knew where he came from. Cool. You can go to the next day. And it was like all of these little bads leading up until when you're facing apocalypse and it's the end of the it's the end of the world. And all these mutants are on this Genosha and the Sentinels are holding them captive like all of that made sense because you had been building these little nuggets in every episode up until that just do that it works it worked with that it worked with infinity war it it, it, in game it's going to work again if you do that tell them again otherwise i don't care about kate bishop fuck her i i want to say my last piece and that's it or whatever indeed this is right. X Men, the X- animated series was freaking great. It boosted the comic book industry, pretty much. So when y'all reintroduce this, the the reboot or whatever, where they go from the end of the last season and go into this, this you better not fuck this up. You better not fuck this. Bro, they ruined my childhood. I'm gonna be mad as hell. I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna watch it. You better be glad you still got the same the old jump on Disney Plus or whatever. I can still go back on. I or got my whatever. son excited about this shit. Mm-hmm. That's what's killing me. My son is sitting here looking at this shit like I loved in game, Daddy. Like me and my son cried together when Tony Stark died in Endgame. game. We watched it together. I did too. I died when we the teared died up too. together. Like, oh, this was amazing storytelling. Like this is this is. This is an epic of, of this better than Gilgamesh. Come on now. Y'all put this together. And then you let it unravel immediately after. But have given us show after show where it's just not making sense. And movie after movie where it's not making sense. Just make it make sense again. Come on. I, I've, been, I've been hearing good things about it. So I, I think it's going to turn out right because they I better. They, this is their cash cow. But I'm going to say this and that's it. Make the storylines. Don't sell action figures. Amen. We we will get the action figures. Just sell the sell the storyline. Amen. And I'm done. To my black leader, make the storylines. Don't sell school. It's the same narrative throughout all this. Do the work. And stop selling bullshit. Whatever it is that you saying that you are or that you're representing. Stand on it. Because we as the partner stand on it. Whatever we say, we stand on it. I say I'm an ignorant nigga that is intelligent as fuck, that has taught black kids, that is a happy black dad and, and former black husband, and that is all about the fuck shit if you want to go there. That's how I live my life. Tomorrow, I'm going to wake up and I'm going to be that. Pat will tell you. He a comic book nerd. He 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 also, though, is really into hip hop. He likes women. He's somewhat of a pimp on the low. But he don't actually sell women. He was well, more of a player. I would say a player. Player from the Himalaya. People like me. But he lives I'm it. Likeable. He's humble. That's who he is. Face will shoot you. We'll smoke a blunt and will also be the first one that's right there when you need some help. And also is a dedicated husband and father. He can stand on that. Damn right, goddammit. All we asking from all of these people we've talked about in the past two episodes is just be who you say you are. So I hope you enjoyed part one and part two of 2024. Sadly, this is how we starting off our year. Hopefully it gets Don't better. I'm good. But what I can tell you and guarantee you unequivocally for the next 360, well, I guess now we too many days into it. What's the day? 
the for the next 360 days, you're going to get partners content. I can guarantee you that. We'll stand on it. Our personalities will not change in that time. I stand on it. You will get the raw, unedited version of what we feel about whatever the subject comes up this year, because already January has been a motherfucker, and we only six days in. I can stand on that. Mm. So if we can stand on that, y'all keep standing with us. Mm-hmm. The black business you should support this week is the partner. Make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe on YouTube. Click the notification bell so that you can get updated whenever we release new content because we will be having some new content coming for your ass. And that will actually start on Monday of this week. I got you. We got clips. We got shorts. We got all kinds of shit coming in the next couple weeks and, and the rest of the year. So please follow us and make sure you do that. Follow us on all social media. You see it at the bottom. Go ahead and make sure you go ahead and take the time to follow us. We actually going to be talking shit on them things. And we respond back when you say something. So you won't be talking to air. Unlike other podcasts, we're going to say something back to you. Yes, we're just that ignorant. Or that intelligent, depending on how you come. Pause. First one of these. <laughs> Uh, but yeah if you like merch and you want to represent the pot face can you tell them how they can get that go to the damn stuff oh rtrayclothing.com rtrayclothing.com go to the damn stuff rtrayclothing.com a-r-t-r-e clothing.com <laughs> You heard what he said. Hey, <laughs> clothing.com. Please go to the store. <laughs> go to the damn store. Oh, excuse me, y'all. I did not expect that to go like that. So that just cooked me off guard. That was mm-hmm. hilarious to me, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, it's 2024. Is at T H E P O D N A S. Instagram, Twitter. <laughs> Facebook, nobody be on Facebook no more, but Twitch, all that shit. Switch, TikTok. China people be looking at us. They on on TikTok because you know they control TikTok. Man, you messed me up, face. That shit was (laughs) Yeah, he threw me off with that one, but it was good. If if nothing else, the episode needed to end on a high note. So I appreciate it. Um, Yeah, I did. Make sure y'all stick with us. We got a lot of shit coming your way. Uh, we got shit scheduled out. Again, the hiatus is over. Your boys are back. And uh, we're more ignorant than ever. because We all in the 40 and up club now. So uh, y'all about to get some unadulterated shit. Indeed. So make sure y'all uh, check us out. And yeah, man, as always, I've been your boy, Ted. And I'm one third of the partner. And I've been along with. I'm the other third of the partners. My name is the Padawan. Um, I love all my bitches, and I've been along with. Mm. He's just putting that out there, isn't he? <laughs> well, my name is Face. I'm in a damn place. I can't say much after that one. Hey, man. Peace. Don't be doing the impossible. To the... <laughs> don't, don't do the impossible, and then don't expect the possible to happen. <laughs> I'm fucked up, y'all. Y'all have a good night. We'll be up. Don't do the impossible. Do the amazing. Holla back, motherfucker. Oh, putting all these goddamn emojis and shit on my picture. That gotta be face the other fuck. <laughs> we got motherfuckers. We got balloons. Uh, yeah.